LA is one of the world's art capitals. So LAist and KCET's Artbound are teaming up to show you vital new documentaries about LA's exciting art scene. Get tickets now at LAist.com slash events. LAS Studios. Today on the LA Report, workers at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank launch a five-day strike over pay and staffing. Hollywood actors in the movie and TV studios and streamers get back to contract talks tomorrow. We'll have a preview. And two years of renovations at the famed Egyptian Theater in Hollywood are just about finished, which means a gala reopening is just days away. It's Monday, October 23rd. I'm Mick Roman. This is the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. We keep talking about how the summer of strikes has now rolled into fall, and today we have a new strike to talk about, a five-day walkout by healthcare workers at Providence St. Joseph Medical Center in Burbank. Lab techs, EMTs, and others, about 700 in all, they're members of SEIU United Healthcare Workers West, which also represents many of the healthcare workers who just reached a deal with Kaiser Permanente. Now, the issues are generally the same, better pay and more staffing. Promise Rainey works in the ER at Providence St. Joseph. We're just asking for what, like, two of our sister hospitals, Holy Cross and Tarzana, make large percentage more than what we make, even though we're supposedly the jewel of the Providence Center here in the Valley. Providence St. Joseph says hospitals set their own compensation rates based on several factors. It also called the union's demands unrealistic. The contract for health care workers at Providence St. Joseph expired in early August. The hospital has brought in temp workers this week. It says patient care will not be affected by the strike. The union for striking hotel workers in Southern California is claiming hotels are hiring refugees as temp workers, including some migrants sent on buses to L.A. from the Texas border with Mexico. Unite Here Local 11 wants the L.A. County District Attorney's Office to see if the hotels or their subcontractors are violating wage or child labor laws. L.A. has reached out to the representatives handling labor talks for the hotels. We have not yet heard back. More labor news. We passed the 100-day mark in the strike by Hollywood actors on Saturday. Contract talks between the actors' union sag after and the movie and TV studios and streamers have been sporadic and contentious and not especially productive. There haven't even been talks for days now, but LAist reporter Robert Garova says the two sides will sit down tomorrow to try again to settle their differences. Talks have been stalled for nearly two weeks. When they broke down, the studios and streamers said conversations were no longer moving in a productive direction. The actors' union accused the studios of using bully tactics to divide its members. Many hoped the stalemate would thaw after the Writers Guild struck their deal, but it's been more than a month since their new contract was ratified. That's meant major financial stress for thousands of Hollywood workers like set builders and editors, and countless others who rely on the industry for customers. Last week, there were reports of a $150 million proposal from a group of Hollywood stars, including George Clooney and Scarlett Johansson. It offered to remove the $1 million cap on union dues for top earners like them in the hopes of ending the strike sooner. On Instagram, sag after President Fran Drescher thanked Clooney for the offer, but said it would not affect the contract actors are currently striking over. For LAist 89.3, I'm Robert Garova. After a break, a note on Filipino American History Month and an update on the historic movie palace in Hollywood known as the Egyptian Theater, now restored to its former glory and ready to reopen. We're inviting you to an exciting new live event series that shows you why L.A. is one of the world's art capitals. L.A.ist and KCET's Artbound are screening new documentaries about an L.A. art rebellion. East-West Players, Angel City Press, and more. And then we're bringing in the artists and the filmmakers for talkback sessions. So you can learn more about this vital art scene. It's all happening at the Crawford in Pasadena. Get tickets now at LAist.com slash events. This is the L.A. Report. I'm Nick Roman. 
October is Filipino American History Month. Nearly four and a half million Americans identify as Filipino. A third of them call California home. And in California, about 20% of nurses are Filipino American. Joy Salas says there's a reason for that high percentage. She's an assistant professor of Asian American Studies at Cal State LA, and she says the first nursing schools in the Philippines were created by Americans to teach the population proper hygiene. Mass migration of nurses really does start in the 1960s. The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 has all these basically big reforms in immigration policy, but one of them is um, allowing a pathway to immigration through employment, especially professional employment. Cal State LA's Joy Salas. She was a guest today on Air Talk with Larry Mantle. They explored the history of Filipinos in Southern California, and you can hear the entire segment online at las.com. The Egyptian Theater on Hollywood Boulevard is reopening next month. The 101-year-old movie palace has been dark for more than two years for much-needed renovations. We get details on the Egyptian's grand reopening from LAist reporter Amon Kai Biraben. The reopening of the theater is set for November 9th, with a screening of David Fincher's The Killer, followed by a conversation with the director. Built in 1922 by theater producer Sid Grauman, the venue has undergone various transformations and ownership changes throughout its century-long history. In 2020, the film streaming company Netflix purchased the theater and began renovating the venue, including a seismic retrofit and an upgrade to its lighting and sound system. Other films, including works by Bradley Cooper and Wes Anderson, will screen before the end of the year. For LA's, I'm Amon Kai Biraban. Thanks for listening to the LA Report. I'm Nick Roman. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. The LA Report is produced by Nate Perez, Libby Rainey, and Tiffany Ujiea. Megan Garvey is the executive editor. Catherine Mailhouse, the director of content development. Our engineer is Tui Mao. Original music by Scott Kelly. You can read more about our stories at LAist.com. You can also listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. You know, listeners like you help make the LA Report possible, so please donate at LAist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live.